Hello, I'd like to welcome you to A Healthier You. I'm Larry Macon, Jr., pastor at Mount Zion Oakwood Village, and I'm also the co-host on the show. It's about you on Channel 3, where weekly I recognize people that are doing great things in our community. However, this web series, it's about you. Yes, it's about your health. You know, as a leader in the community, I just felt uh, compelled to make sure that we get the latest information on how you can live a healthier life. And so I'm partnering with university hospitals and we've been spreading the word and talking with different doctors and specialists to make sure that you had all the latest information. And today I'm speaking with Dr. Henderson. He's a urologist at university hospitals and I'm so glad that he's here and he does specialized work and especially for all of our female listeners. So what's our topic for today, Dr. Henderson? Well, thank you for having me on. It's a great honor to be here and great to be spreading the word of, about these important topics. So today I wanted to, to briefly talk about something called pelvic organ prolapse or a oh. vaginal bulge. Gotcha. And so tell us what that is and what are the causes of it, Dr. Henderson? Sure. So it's very common. Um, so sometimes it can be the patient feeling something down there, feeling a bulge, feeling some pressure, feeling some pulling. Sometimes it's a doctor has told them you have a dropped bladder. But what it truly is, is kind of a weakness in the vaginal tissues that have caused those vaginal tissues to quote unquote drop. Um, so the, the main risk factors for it are genetics. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's a, a, a pregnancy, whether it's a cesarean section or a vaginal delivery, prior surgeries, and age really puts you at risk, but it's really, really common. So up to about 80 to 90 percent of women who have completed childbearing have some degree of prolapse, whether that's symptomatic or not. Wow. So it's good to know, I, I'm, I'm sure for some of our listeners, that it's very common if they do have it, so it's not a rarity. But uh, one uh, question I'm sure our viewers have is, is what kind of symptoms can one have to know that this is something they probably should get looked at? Sure. So, so I mean, first and foremost, it's, this is not a medical emergency. If okay. all of a sudden taking a shower and feel something coming out of the vagina, this is extremely rarely like a cancer. That's the number one thing that, that patients are concerned about. They suddenly feel this bulge, suddenly feel that something has changed. Whereas typically this is something that's really been slowly progressing over time. And it's something that suddenly you kind of you notice. Mm -hmm. The symptoms typically involve pressure, mm -hmm. pulling, feeling a heaviness or feeling something inside the vagina. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it, is not um, a hard mass. It's not something that, that should cause any significant pain. Mm -hmm. But what some people will notice that they'll find changes in the way that they're urinating or the way that they're having bowel movements with this bulge. Um, now, the, the idea is, is that it's, it's very easy to diagnose. It's, it's a very brief physical exam um, yeah. to actually see where this weakness is coming from. Because if you, if you think about the, the vagina, you've got a front wall and a back wall and a top. Um, the front wall is where that bladder sits. The back wall is where the rectum is. And the top is where that uterus either is or used to be um, uh, before a hysterectomy. And because there are these three walls, there can be a weakness in any one of these three spaces. So hmm. people will sometimes talk about, oh, my bladder dropped. Well, it's not really fair for the bladder. What it is, it's the support, the vaginal wall that supports the bladder has dropped. The bladder kind of comes along with it. Um, but the idea is, is that a good physical exam can, can determine really where this weakness is and if anything really needs to be done about it. Wow. And if something does need to be done, are there any tr uh, treatment or therapies that can help help them out? Absolutely. So, so the, the great thing is, is that the, the, the majority of the treatment does not involve surgery. Oh, so great. A great. number of my patients have, you know, have put off seeing a physician for years, sometimes decades, because they're worried that the doctor is just going to throw them under anesthesia and attack them with a scalpel. <laughs> but yeah. that, that, does not, that does not need to be the case. Um, when it comes to prolapse, really we, we talk about kind of four options. Mm, okay. One is expectant management, okay? Coming in, confirming that this is going on, that this is safe, the bladder's emptying, there are no other abnormalities. 
we can watch this. So about half of the time from the, the, the diagnosis of the prolapse moving forward, half the time that prolapse doesn't grow any larger. Okay. The other half, sometimes it does get. So just watching it, that's one option. A second option is something called a pessary. And a pessary is something that is a soft piece of silicone in a variety of different shapes and sizes that can okay. be placed vaginally and lift things up. There's a, there, there's, there's uh, uh, a special kind of physical therapy to help with the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. And then of course, finally, there are a, a number of different surgical options to correct the prolapse itself. Okay. Got you. So there's, there's some options. But if somebody wanted to do surgery, what are their surgery options with this? Sure. So again, it's, there's a wonderful range of surgical options um, that, in, that, that, that uh, change the, the invasiveness of the surgery um, that, that either utilizes kind of a special graft or like a, a mesh. Um, there was a, 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 a two and a half years ago, um, almost three years ago now, the, the FDA pulled off the market these vaginal mesh kits which was wonderful um, in my estimation. They, were, uh, they caused a lot of problems. So nothing that I will talk about today will involve any kind of mesh kits. Mm -hmm. But we do have surgical options that involve utilizing mesh that's similar to the mesh that we use for hernia repairs okay. within, the, within the vagina, within the abdomen. So there are laparoscopic little incisions on the belly. Uterus can be removed and the vagina can be lifted. This can be used with little sutures that dissolve on their own mm. or these stronger mesh products. Mm -hmm. There are even options if the bulge is very significant for replacing that, that bulge all externally oh, wow. um, and lifting that bulge back up. And a number of these procedures are ones that you can go home the same day wow. or spend just one night in the hospital. Typically speaking, you need about six weeks of recovery, but the great thing about the surgeries is, is number one, you're never too old, okay? We, there, we have lots of different options, but most importantly, once you are finished recovering over those six weeks, you get to go back to doing everything that you want to do and maybe some things you don't want to do right. after that. So there are no restrictions. Like, I got my knee replaced. I, I can't go skiing or I can't go jogging. This is something where after those six weeks of recovery, you get to get back to doing everything that you want to do. I like that. Back to life, Dr. Henderson. Exactly. <laughs> Quality of life is important. That's Very great. important. That's great. So this is good to know that this can be fixed to all of our female viewers. So Dr. Henderson, thank you so much uh, for enlightening us on this ailment. Uh, if someone needs to uh, have some complaints or have some issues, you know, how can they contact you? Absolutely. So, so this, this specialty that, that I belong to is called female pelvic medicine and reconstructive surgery. Okay. It's a tongue twister. Okay. Um, but it involves a, 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 a specializing in both OBGYN and urology. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a number of us, both at university hospitals and in the greater Cleveland area. Okay. Um, at, 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 in, in Cleveland, at university hospitals, there are, there are five of us now. Okay. Um, I am located on the east side. I see patients between the northeast at University Hospitals Richmond and University Hospitals Bedford, and also operate at Ahuja. We have uh, practitioners downtown, on the west side, on the south, and even as far, far east as Giaga as well. Okay. Um, and all you need to do is either say you need to see a female pelvic medicine reconstructive surgeon okay. or a urogynecologist is what we're sometimes right. called, but they're trying to get rid of that term, even though it's simple. Yeah. Um, it confuses everybody. No, I understand. Um, but there are lots, lots of opportunities to follow up with one of us to, to talk about your options. Again, it doesn't, doesn't need to be surgery. It's something that you just know what your options are moving forward. Got you. Well, I appreciate that, Dr. Henderson, and I want to thank you for expanding our knowledge about what University Hospitals is doing to uh, help our viewers have a healthier lifestyle, especially during these times and these days. And so I, again, want to talk to our viewers and let you know you can contact me on LarryMickenJr.com and I can find more information for you, or you can go on my social media where I continue to show these videos of leaders in our community, doctors, and all of our uh, social workers and all those that are helping you out during this pandemic. Um, also, don't forget, good health equals good wealth. And so thank you for watching. Thank you again, Dr. Henderson, for giving us all the information that we needed for this segment. Thank you. Stay healthy. 
You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.